Okay, folks, uh, we're going to get started here doing some painting here shortly. Let me get the computer up uh, loaded as well so I can see any comments on there. And we'll be rolling. We'll be rolling here. Make sure the volume on this thing is off. We don't need to do some kind of an echo situation. And uh, it's still relatively early, so hopefully we'll catch uh, some folks on here. Then uh, we're going to put some of this stuff away here. And um, it's been several days since I've painted. Um, I honestly don't know how many. Uh, I know the last thing is we finished up the... Uh, actually, we painted on Saturday. So uh, we did that ziggurat for joe that's what our saturday project was so we got that done and i've been busy ever since uh going out of town and so forth but um i did end up giving mitch his little castle he did so i commandeered this little thing from me from him so this is exactly how this thing comes and we're not doing this next but um this will be um on down the line and we're going to repaint this completely it doesn't look too bad it's just kind of sloppy put on here you look at you can see the the paint here for the windows let's have to flip this thing around i don't know this is it so there's two sides of the camera right of my of my phone one of them is the the one that you physically see the camera on like when you're taking a picture of someone that's this side uh and actually takes worse pictures than if you use the one that would face your own self, which is this. Well, it takes worse video, let's put it that way. So this is, uh, you can see the, the, it's got decent detail. It's just sloppy. It's like they're using a brush that's way too big. So for that, but we will paint this. This is going to be some kind of Italian looking church. Uh, you know, I am working on a, uh, on the Pope's army. So, you know, this could be somewhere he could sally from or what have you. Um, have this on the board. This is uh, Churches Around the World. Uh, limited edition, exclusively designed and hand painted in China for Dollar Tree stores. Lovely. This is something Mitch had. I don't know how long he's had this thing, but um, we're going to, uh, well, we're going to take these little felt things off for one. But um, we're going to repaint this thing at some point. I didn't want to take four or five things over here and, and hold, hold on to them and do, do them one at a time. So this will be a BUA or a, well, probably a BUA, even though it normally would be normal buildings. But that's not what we're doing today. I just figured I'd show you guys while I was getting everything geared up. And uh, welcome to when day night okay we're going to go back to where we left off last time with my Italian army I'm going to put this guy here towards the back and um, that is these three figures here oh boy we dry brushed on this thing so let's get that out of our life Whew, good we can think now I can't think with all those paint splotches in front of me it's distracting uh, so that's where we're going to pick up at, is uh, finishing up. These two guys are completely done. We need to finish up this night, and uh, which looks like only the, the horse portions are on there, and we can go and, and continue. This army only has a total of uh, six knights, uh, six knight figures, two knight stands, not counting the knight general. So that's what we're going to work on at this point. All right, so... I suspect that most of these colors are dead. I may be surprised, but... All right. Let's see what we can get done. I am at the end of my battery life, so to speak, um, at this time. So I'm not sure how long I'm going to have the energy to do this. So, but I do have an opportunity for the house being kind of quiet, so I didn't want to pass that up and um, not getting pulled into a different direction. 
All right, so let's go ahead and uh, put the magical juices, make sure we've got enough of this. And this is the airbrush thinner that I've been using. Yeah, we're like bone dry. Okay, well, I found uh, I found a use for this little thing. So I went and picked up some whiskey, um, I don't know, maybe six months ago or whatever. And they had this brand here, which I didn't know anything about. It was on sale. And uh, it came with a cute little um, a hoodie on it. It goes through the whiskey bottle. And apparently this is a brand that is pushed by some MMA fighter, which I wasn't aware of. I think he's Irish or something like that. He's part owner of this. This stuff wasn't bad. Um, and I'm like, well, what am I going to do with a little hoodie? So we'll uh, we'll just put this around it. <laughs> Their brush thinner, it's clear. So my daughter liked the idea, anyways. Okay, stuff is all right. Unless it's total garbage, I'll I'll usually get whatever's on sale. You never know what they have. The distributor may have too much of. Um. Okay, so we've got our magic liquid there, and now we're going to paint the horse. Okay, so these other horses, we had a, I guess like a medium or dark brown horse, and then this one's as well, so we're going to do like a dark brown, really dark one on this one. It's called for that SS camouflage brown color here. All right. I knew this was bone dry, so I went ahead and got it wet before I got started. All right, let's get some of that color right there. And how's our black doing? All right. And let's just paint. That's all we need on this guy, right? Is this just the horse part? Yeah. So I had an interesting thing that happened. Um, literally on Monday. It may have actually happened on Sunday, and I wasn't aware of it. But on Monday, um, as some of you are aware of, um, I have a site on Facebook. Um where I uh, put videos up, uh, I'm going to say a year ago, something like that. Um, I've been able to go on Facebook Live about July, but I wasn't able to do uh, it before then. But going through an app called, um, oh man, the name escapes me of the app. I was able to put do some live videos on Facebook Live. And I did probably, I don't know, 20 of them or something like that. But the problem with it is that th you're going to have limited exposure being on Facebook. There's just some people that just don't want to get on Facebook um, for privacy reasons, or they have their own reasons. Uh, I think it's wonderful for our hobby to be able to communicate. Uh, I think that's the best place like to ask DVA questions and things like that is on the Facebook page. And just use it for what you want to use it. You, know? um, you don't need to get into arguments and stuff on there it's to it's to do positive stuff but i understand there's some people that don't want to be on it so that's going to limit my the amount of people that i can get my message out but it was a way to do it live um so i did that i want to say for a couple of months until i got the amount of subscribers that i needed to on this channel um it wasn't to replace it it was just kind of a interim well i got a um I got a notification from uh, Facebook about a month ago and that said that all of the videos that I had put on my page or my site, because I couldn't use my own personal page. I had to create another, another Facebook location. Uh, all of those videos were going or were due to expire, which surprised me um, that they would um that there would be an expiration on them but um so i had a couple of weeks to get them off well i i didn't want to 
throw away everything I've done because some of them, yeah, some of them are paint sessions that aren't really exciting, but a couple of them were um, how to play the game, etc. That sort of thing. So I was pretty proactive in getting those videos off. And I think on Friday, I pulled the last one off of there. And or Thursday or something like that. No, I didn't work on Friday. It was my birthday. I'm not working on my birthday anymore. And um, so I want to say Thursday, I pulled the last one off. Um, a video that wasn't like a paint session or something like that. And uploaded it onto this channel. Well, on Friday, I think, or I found out about it on Saturday morning or whatever, um, our local convention, a local, I mean, it's in Orlando, um, finally announced that they're lifting the the ban, or at least the hotel that it's being held at is lifting the ban on masks. Um, and what that means is that uh, Mitch and I will now attend and run games and stuff like that. We're just not interested in running gaming stuff when we're masked and you can't understand people and it's hot and it's for 80 hours at a time. It's like... You know, we don't need to game that bad to do that. So, um, so yeah, they lifted the ban. Good news, right? So we're going to put together a schedule. Well, the normal thing is if you guys have seen that Facebook video just before the end of the world happened in March, this is March 2020, we had planned on running a full slate of games at Recon in April, Historicon in July, and... Huracan in September. And we've made a video on what we we're going to run in each one. So I'm like, oh, that's real easy. So the games are back on, right? So let's just run the stuff that we were planning on running, running before the, uh, the end of the world was capping. And between the time that I downloaded the last video and Sunday, when I was able to react because I was out of town, um, all the videos got eliminated. So I no longer have access to the video that we made detailing what we were planning on doing in 2020. This is a video that we probably shot in like, I don't know, February or something like that, 2020. So like, great. Well, we'll just have to start from scratch. So if you were planning on attending one of our shows and had a particular game in mind that you wanted to play, that's kind of out the window. So um, literally missed it by like a day. Because what I was going to do on Monday night at lunch was I was going to watch that video and then take my little notepad and figure out what the themes of the different events are. Because we we put some thought into what we were doing in what session and everything. Nope, that's all gone too. So, well, the good news is we'll probably have more interesting themes than the one we picked. Go. So we're going to have a little get together on Friday and try to knock that out. So those of you guys that are planning on joining us we'll at least uh, be able to plan a little bit and, and see what kind of uh what kind of uh tournaments and uh, events we're going to put on but that was really unfortunate that uh that happened but eh, no biggie literally missed it by one day uh that was a video i wasn't going to transfer over because it's basically us in February saying, hey, we're going to run this these things in April, and we're going to run these things in July. And it was like, oh, we had no idea they were going to shut down the entire world for a year plus. So, anyhow, there will be games. They just won't be the same ones that we were planning on running. So, anyhow, just one of them things. But... Uh, I'm glad I didn't do any more videos on Facebook because if they're going to just delete my stuff, I mean, what incentive is there to, to, to put out more information for people to, to be aware of the game and stuff if they're just going to take it away from me? You know, it's kind of like, what, what's that app? My daughter uses it and I refuse to use it because things disappear. Is it Instagram? No, it's uh, Snapchat. It's Snapchat is what she uses. And it's like, yeah, their stuff disappears after a while. I'm like, well, why should I invest my time and effort in it if you're just going to take it away from me? You know, it's bad enough. I'm going to lose everything when I freaking die. OK, we don't need something else to do in the interim on our way there to get to everything taken away from you. 
you know? <laughs> I mean, that's why I'm not afraid of doing these videos and showing you all the tricks I've accumulated over the years because what am I supposed to do? Take them to the grave with me? You know? Hey, it's my way of giving back. I mean, maybe you'll find something interesting or maybe you'll be like, no, nah, I don't want to do it that way. Well, I'm not telling anybody to do a certain way, but I've learned a lot of stuff on YouTube and it's just my way. Oh, snap. That's a needle. There we go. And it is, uh, they are filed. I mean, you can't poke yourself. You can poke yourself if you fall on it. But... Okay. Disaster averted. <laughs> Don't know what I was saying, but um, I've learned a lot of stuff on, I've gotten a lot of free information on YouTube. And I figured, well, I've got some stuff that I know about, and I figured I might as well share that with you guys. And in the process, it keeps me on task here, continuing um, working on the hobby. So I'm not, you know, surfing around or changing the radio station or whatever, changing the podcast, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's useful for me too. But... I, I won't be using that Facebook site anymore, definitely. Because if it's going to be like, oh, well, your video's gone now, or it's only there for a year, why? You know? Why, um, why invest time and effort into that? Anywho, that's, that was an interesting thing that happened just a few days ago. So... We will just start from scratch with themes and stuff and hope we'll come up with better ones than we had. We'll never know because I don't remember what I what we had planned. But I guess somewhere I might run into it where it is, but it's just as easy just coming from scratch doing it. So But we do have some new things that were supposed to happen in 2020 and never did. One of the things I'd gotten in January is a, and I'll do, when we get a little closer, I'll do a review of it. Uh, I had bought a, um, one of those little wagons that you can put stuff in um, that has the collapsible sides. Um, you know, like you would take to the beach specifically to carry our, um, our war gaming stuff. Uh, because at the Orlando location, we pack and unpack every session. So to make it easier to carry the stuff to the car um we have that and like literally I, i'd waited like seven years to get one and as soon as i get one the end of the world happens so um what else do we have um fast and furious was a new video but an old theme we've run the theme before um but it's a um it's a it's a new one if it's got like the comment, it, one way to tell if it's a new video, if you look at the little thumbnail of it, um, and it looks like it's got like a header and all that, it's a new video. Uh, the old ones, I had no way of doing that on, um, on, um, I can't remember what it's, what it's called. Um, what's it called? Streamlabs. On Streamlabs, I had no way of doing that, so. Hello, Greg. Before breakfast? Be able to watch for a while before breakfast. Joel was retired. That's how I knew. Yeah. Yep, we just gained another snowbird in Florida. The state's going to hell. <laughs> Somebody else that uh, wants to lessen their taxes, so they come here. <laughs> yeah, he should be joining us every week. So... That is, that is the plan. Except, I think, next week. Next week, we've got a return to the War of the Roses campaign. Supposedly. Uh, Marty is supposedly coming down, and we should have several people, but you never know. Um, some people just have issues showing up. I know one thing's for sure. If there's a video, I'll be there. Because who else is going to shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, we might even have several videos next week because 
there's less people in this house next week. So my Irish are hardcore. My Irish are freaking awesome. I love you know the thing is a good thing. Here's the difference. The Irish and my Turks are the same in that I like both of the armies a lot how they turned out. The difference is the Irish can win games. Uh, the Irish are now um, the Irish are now, let me pull this up. Yeah, they are they are hardcore. There was that one turn that I played, if you watch that video, where I just didn't know what I what I was gonna choose. I, I, I obviously chose wisely, but I'm like, I, I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Should I do this or should I do this? Um, my Irish, let's see. My Irish are now eight and two proper with with Scots Isles allies. So in other words, replacing three of the Saloy with three more blade. They are, man, I've run them that way a long time. They are eight and five. So all told, even with allies, they're 16 and seven. Yeah, they're eight and two without allies, with just Irish by themselves. That's pretty darn good. That's off to, uh, well, it's not as good as the Burgundians, but that's just a fluke. The Burgundians are now, early Burgundians have never been beaten. They're six and oh, and the Ordnance are six and three. Yeah, it's going to be hard to... Well, it makes up for my poor Turks that are 16 and 32. But I still love them. I like how they look. But yeah, I'm Irish. Or... Throw that pink dice away. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got nothing to do with that. I just can't use the... You know, if I have a dice that goes with the army, I'm going to use the dice that goes with the army, not the pink one. How many knights to do now? Um... Once I finish this one, three more. And then we can go on to something else. I need to keep this momentum going before I say, you know, the Pope can wait. Let's work on the uh, Amorites. So I made a boo-boo the other day, and I got caught on it. I'm not really up on my uh, Old Testament type stuff. And um, I got the Am Ammonites and Amorites mixed up. So I thought the Amorites, which is the army that I have, were um, the the worshippers of that god called Malok. So I, my plan was to do a, um, if you look up, um, it's kind of creepy because I, I don't like looking up things that have horns. If you know what I'm talking about, it's just a bad juju. But um, the if you look up M-O-L-O-C-H, and there's a statue that I was going to make out of, uh, what's that stuff called? Sculpey or whatever. And it's like a minotaur type God with open hands and little spaces to put the ashes of the, of the babies, you know, cause there was, cause I figured, oh, that would be, you know, that'd be great to, you know, put that, but that's actually the Ammonites, not the Amorites. The Amorites apparently were, well, the whole reason I was building that army is it was a book one army and I liked the figures. And, um, you know, once I found out that, oh, they might actually be, you know, devil worshipers, so to speak, it's like, well, that makes it really interesting. But um, that wasn't the whole reason to do them. But um, they, um, that isn't the case. So, you know, um, oh, well. <laughs> but if you look at that, if you look up for M-O-L-O-C-H, that's what you'll see. You'll see a a um a scary thing that they burn babies in so i was going to make one of those now i don't have to do that Whew. no anyways the amorites are apparently uh guys that were nomadic guys in the desert and they uh and they settled in uh, mesopotamia after the um after the uh the third dynasty of earth went went away and they just kind of in there they're kind of like pre-babylonians so to speak so um you know, time for breakfast. Catch you later. Okay. Don't eat too many baked beans. Hopefully you're not eating any. I, I like foods from other countries, but I, I, I like our breakfast here. Not that I eat anything elaborate every day. I think every day my standard thing is a granola bar, uh, a little thing of yogurt, 
and um, and a uh, and a banana, pretty much standard every day. Now, if I go out, I get things more elaborate. But golden calf worshippers is that what they did? You need a golden calf? I don't know. I'm I don't know my Old Testament stories. That uh, I looked up a little bit on them, and that's it. But I do know that their shields are made out of because um, there's actually a fair amount of them in in the uh, in the armies and enemies of the Near East book. Uh, there's there's quite a bit on these guys, and it looks like their shields are made out of uh, goat goat hide. So we're going to be doing some kind of goat type things on that. But anyways, I am excited about doing a book one army, believe it or not. So, um, golden half. We'll have to look and see if golden calf is uh, is one of those things. So that there may be a picture of to inspire me, but um, I'll have to save the baby burning for uh, when I do a Carthaginian army or something like that. If talk about a army with a losing record, that's a hard army to play. I really try to discourage people from. Picking that as your first DBA army. Got get people discouraged. Like that's not this game is no good. Hannibal won won all the time, and I can't even win one battle. Yeah, dude, that's like the hardest battle. That's like the hardest army to play. You know, that's because Hannibal was a freaking genius, not because the army was worth a damn. It's not horrible army. It's just high aggression, and it doesn't have any. It has a lot of troops you can't count on. You got to create your victory using warband, and that's sometimes more challenging than you want it to be. So uh, it's mainly that high aggression is just brutal. So, but it is a popular army. It was even more popular when uh, who's the guys who used to make the figures? Corvus Belly. They used to make an art. They had an army pack for the Carthaginians, and people were buying those things left and right. Oh, there we go. And um, <laughs> so yeah, Amorites, Ammonites, not the same thing. I'm not sure the Ammonites even have an army. They, I guess it would be probably some of those uh, Bedouin, one of the Bedouin lists. But that does, those aren't very exciting. The whole reason I got these guys is I liked how some of the figures looked. And um, I don't think they'll turn out really cool looking. Because it's going to be like the Irish. They're going to be guys that don't look really exciting. But then you get to make them all different and give them some personality. So, yeah, I really do like the Irish. I, I, I know that I'm going to have a heck of, I'm going to have a lot of fun whenever I get around doing pre-feudal pre Scots for the same reason. You know, they're unusual, they're unusual armies that not many people use. More people have pre-feudal Scots than, than they do uh, medieval Irish, but it's an army that's not really popular. And, um... You know, they're kind of plain clothes looking folks, not exciting with shiny armor and all that stuff and get to kind of give them some personality. I, some of my favorite armies that I've enjoyed painting are ones like that. My Courage are the same way. They are just run of the mill guys wearing uh, turbans and things like that. Not, not fancy, not dressed fancy or anything. And uh I enjoy them quite a bit as well. They they're fun to fun to build, so. All right. Yeah, I was a little bummed when I found out I couldn't do a a sinister looking camp. Oh well. Send the army back. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> That was actually an afterthought. After I did that, I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't realize it was the Ammonites, not the Amorites. After I did all those searches on eBay for demonic deity 
this or pendant or, you know, something I could use to my, you don't want to do those searches. You know, you come up with stuff you don't want to, you have no interest in buying, you know, I think it was idle, something like that. There's creepy stuff out there. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not you're religious, there's just some stuff you don't need to. It's different if you make your own. It's it's different if you buy it already made because you're wondering, like, what was somebody thinking about when they were making this thing, you know? Nothing could, can come from that, so. <laughs> I don't watch horror movies, and I certainly don't watch horror movies that have any any demonic type thing. That just no. I need to be able to sleep every night. You know, there's some there's some things I don't need to be exposed to. Okay, we got the back of the saddle on this guy, and looks like the part of the sword you grip. Is that the hilt? I don't know my I don't remember my sword part names. The handle of a sword is that the hilt? I think it is. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before, and unfortunately, I will be wrong again. I'm going to have to write that down. I don't want to forget about the golden calf. We'll have to look that up. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not up on the Old Testament stuff. Sorry, folks. We don't know none of that stuff. I was raised Catholic. <laughs> oh, man. Just the New Testament stuff. I want to know what's in the... Uh, I want to know what's in the Hebrew books that didn't make it into the Old Testament. Might be some cool stuff in there. Amorites had a king called Og. Well, they also had a king that sucked. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, in DBMM, there's a brilliant generalist, and there's also, what, what does he call it? Inert general. One of the one of the kings, and one of the Amorite kings is a guy who's inert. I'm like, there's your excuse to build that guy. I don't remember what, he, what his name is. It's a weird name. Og. Is that your first name or your last name? Ugh. Don't ask the king that. He'll banish you. They were descended from giants. Okay. Like 20 foot tall, 10 foot tall, 7 foot tall, or... I gotta know details. I gotta know details. All right. Right, we got to do the um, this one strap. We'll go ahead and use this color. This should work fine. What's the name of that band? They might be giants. The Amorites. They might be giants. So they were related to, uh, what's his face? Goliath. Right? Those guys were, um, who's the guys with the funny hats? I know that doesn't really narrow it down. That really could be anybody. <laughs> uh, the Philistines. 
Goliath was the Philistines, which, by the way, is not an army that I see a lot, and it's a darn good army. There's nothing wrong with those guys. Mitch has them and rarely plays them. Well, he doesn't like Spear. Nah. I like Spear. The golden calf was sacrificial also. Yeah, I'm... I think it's really weird to... To sacrifice a living thing to something that may or may not exist. It just... Something bothers me about that, you know? And I'm not an animal rights person by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just, like, wrong, you know? I, I don't know. I'm looking at it with my 2021 vision. <laughs> but, yeah. We were talking about that at work the other day. Was it at work? No, it was before our game session. That's what it was. Like, you know, how does stuff like the Aztecs, like, well, we got to sacrifice people or the sun won't rise. Like, can you try, like, not sacrificing them one day and, like, see what happens? I mean, you know, the, the people at the top of the food chain had to know it was all BS. I don't know. It just, I don't, I don't get it. And then you sacrifice your own children? No. No, nobody's sacrificing my daughter. Sorry. Pommel, Hilt, and Tang. Okay. Yeah. You're not sacrificing my daughter. That ain't happening. Not cool. Yeah, how do those things get started? Well, I don't know how some of the early stuff gets started. Like, you know, somebody's like, hey, why is the sky blue? I'm like, man, I, I better come up with a job. I better come up with a reason or I'm out of a job. But sacrificing your own people? No. No, no, that doesn't make sense in any in any way. But that guy that told me that I got him mixed up, I'm glad he did that because he saved me a hell of a lot of work. <laughs> I don't want to build that. I don't want to build that thing and then come to find out they didn't actually use that. So, now I don't have to build a camp. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, sir. It saved me all kinds of trouble. Now, I'll build a camp, but if there's nothing that stands out specifically for it, then I might as well just be building the next army. And then I can just use this thing. This is the, the camp that one size fits all. You know, this is just bamboo skewers. So... I've had a long time. I've had that 16 years. Yeah, Goliath was a Philistine. Exactly. Yeah, the Philistine army is cool. Nothing wrong with them. But doesn't get played much. I don't know why. I mean, it's pretty much it can... Philistines are like sea people. Yeah, they're like the settled sea people because they have the same, that bamboo reed type hat. 
to see people that is, a, is the jury still out about where they came from? I don't know. I don't know if the jury's still out on that. Had some. We played some good battles with the Sea People, the Egyptians. Really good battles. A few of them filmed too. Zany landings and stuff like that. Just crazy stuff. But the one thing I was commenting back when, back, I said this several months ago, that I was getting more done now that there's no conventions coming up and there was no reason to build things for. But now that ones have been announced, hopefully it doesn't slow down my, my, my painting desire to produce uh, other armies to play with. But I've been doing better than I ever have with no conventions in sight, so. All right, what do you got left on this dude? That it? Yeah, I think we're going to call this guy done. Okay. All right, let's go to the Maritime site and see if we can pick another knight that we're going to use for this on this stand and um, see if I can do that. What time is it? Seven thirty. I probably got another hour or so. I want to cut out before the, the house gets no noisier with other people here. Merliton. Oh, miniatures. So on the Merloton site, they actually have uh, flags and uh, also um, uh, like shield transfers. They don't call them that. They're called, um, well, there's a heading called flags and shields and paper shield covers, paper shield covers 15 millimeter. Okay, and we're interested in Guelphs or houses of, or knights from Bologna. These are kind of the papal allies, so to speak. Huh, they're not on here. Okay, what about... Um, Oh, I see. I need to go inside and do, uh, what do we have under full Sapa? Okay, yeah, this is the Bolognese Knights. So we're going to do another one that's red with the uh, with the black and white striping on it. Okay, got it. That's what we're going to do. All right, let's move this back over to here. All right, and let's, these are the three night. I'm actually going to go pour myself a coffee. I think there's still iced coffee left. A little bit of an edge to power through this. So we'll be right back.
Yeah, that's the part. That's the other problem about book one is all the references are like really limited, and um, the Old Testament is like a big part of it. Of you know, regardless of whether or not it's uh, whether some people consider it accurate or not, at least it's a running uh, a running um, thing there. A lot of the other nations don't have anything. I mean, what is it? Is it like the Gauls? The Gauls don't even have a written language, so like nothing was written about them. So it's like, what? You know, it's not like they were just were around one day. You know, they were around a long time, and nothing's available from them. But um, you know, it's sad that we don't have more information on what really happened here. Okay, this guy actually doesn't have a covering. This is the guy that we're going to use. Let's do a guy with no covering. All right. Um, you usually have about six armies on the go and in paint rotation. I don't know how you can do it. Would you start the Amorites before finishing the Papal stuff? So the problem with doing that is I can, like, get an excuse not to finish the papals guys out i don't know i may uh i i may decide to do them um let's see next monday the girls are gone for a week so um i'm gonna have a lot of painting time i'm gonna try to paint every evening with you guys um and i may start the amorites at that point but um because i know for a fact there's going to be stuff that they're going to be able to play in in the next convention so and I really liked how that desert terrain turned out, out that I did with the uh, with the uh, ziggurat. So uh, maybe maybe because you know the problem with the papal army is other than the pope stand, which we're leaving it for last for obvious reasons. Um, a lot of these other elements I've already done. You know, once I'm done with this knight, I'm going to do. Uh, there's a couple of crossbow stands. There's a couple of spear stands. There's three units of Saloy. And then we get into the Pope, and, you know, I think there's a fast horror. Infuriated peasants. I got to get guys that look really angry with pitchforks and, you know. Um, but that's it. That, that army's kind of done. Now, the Pope stand's going to be fun as hell to do, you know. But um, the rest of the stuff, yeah, I've kind of done, already done it before, you know. But um, that's the problem with this switching to the Amorites is then I've got stuff that's unfinished. Like, for instance, I've got these guys that have been sitting here. These Athenians, yes, I have Athenians that have been sitting here since 2009, unfinished. And it's not because I didn't like how they turned out. Zeiston figures. And um, we've got one more floating around here somewhere. Where is he? Maybe he fell. Is that him? Yeah, he fell. Oh, he fell and his thing broke off. Yeah. He had a javelin here. It must have been used super glue instead of epoxy. Epoxy never breaks. So I've got these five Athenian figures that I'll probably never go back to. Because I did them before Mitch was in town. And there's no reason for me to do Greek because he has them all. So. Um, anyhow. Uh, I'm probably going to finish the paint. The Pope before I do the Amorites, probably. Because um, I was actually thinking until somebody, until he, that guy took the sail, wind out of my sails, I was actually going to do the, um, I was going to do the, uh, the little idol while the girls were gone. And um, once I found out, oh, that's, they don't worship that. They don't, they don't burn their babies. I'm like, oh, okay, well. Maybe I don't need to do that idol anymore. The reason to, to do them is kind of gone by the wayside to do the idol. So for the time being, we're going to be doing the Pope next. So, all right. So this shield is red and yellow and red and white and black. All right. So that's what we're going to start with first. Let's go ahead and get some red out of here. because I'm sure this is all dead Red's dead, man.
but I don't try doing some super heavy planning because as soon as you do that, something happens and you got to go in a different direction. You know, but I can't have six armies done at once because I'll have nothing. It's the same reason that I can't mass produce figures because I get discouraged when I show up to paint something and I just like say I'll do flesh on like eight figures and that's all I do. Well, I don't have a figure finished. And then the next day you sit down and you do like maybe the pants or the pants and the shirts. And when you're done with that, you still don't have a figure. So it's like you don't get anything accomplished for like five or four or five or six or seven painting sessions. Then when you do, you've got like 20 guys done. Yeah, but the problem is, is I got to stay motivated on track and not just be discouraged. So, um, you know, because there's other things I'd rather do than paint. <laughs> just like there's other things I'd rather do than go to work in the morning but you know okay that's about the extent of the red okay and what else is the rest of it uh Yeah, we're gonna we're definitely gonna be doing some paint. Absolutely, uh, it's the best thing I could do. It's super cheap. I gotta do it anyways. Um, and um, you know, when you're done, you feel like you did something useful. Unlike watching television or playing video games. Um, as much as I like, I don't really like watching television, but I do like playing video games. But you know. Um, I'm not enjoying playing video games against people I don't know. I've got, I got two. I'm playing this field of glory, and I'm, I've got. I'm in, I'm in the end. I'm in the end of one tournament, and I've started another one. Plus, I'm playing some, uh, some, uh, some games with someone, a real person, um, a DBA player, and those are fine. I like playing those, but with random people, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, random people don't aren't playing games like face-to-face -face stuff they're playing in like really um games with no honor they're just doing weird stuff you know i guess that's to be expected but And that game has a lot of drawn games, a lot of drawn games, because you have like a time frame to complete your game in. Plus, you also have a, a, time, a limited amount of turns the game needs to complete in. So I think I've got like six drawn games or something like that. Well, I mean, over 100 or something, which is a lot compared to DBA, where I only have one. So... But yeah, I keep track of those wins and losses as well because they're interesting to look at. So, this one particular gentleman I played, um, I think I'm close to playing him 80 times. So, those I enjoy. So, playing with a real person. Well, they're all real people, but some people are just dishonorable. I have one guy that went and camped in a corner. He had the better army, he went and camped in a corner. Like, you know, he started with all his troops here, like, this is your board. And then he just, whoop, everybody went over here and just sat defensively. I'm like, that's just stupid. I mean, who does that? Some guy who's got no social skills as far as face-to-face uh, -face interaction with other people. I think I need, to, I need to move this red down a little bit more. So I'm probably not going to join any more tournaments in that. It did just, you know, I get, I wake up in the morning and I can't do anything for like an hour and 15 minutes. I got to like do all my turns and stuff, which is okay, but you know, it's cutting into my painting, you know, so.
And there's some there's some good things about that game. There's some good there's some things that Field of Glory does better than DBA. But there's no pip mechanism. And it doesn't matter jack shit whether you lose your general or not. I mean, it has a very insignificant difference if you do or not. So uh, I think BBA is a better game. You know, so. I'm going to be painting every night next week. Good. We'll make it a date. Me too. Except Monday. I can't paint on Monday because we'll be gaming on Monday, but. I'll try to paint every night. I'll get my exercise out of the way first, John, and that way we can. Well, maybe I'll do it backwards. Maybe I'll, I'll do that last in the evening. Yeah, but it's good. Painting's good for the. Uh, painting's good for the soul. All right, how many black lines we got on this thing? One, two, three. The tippy tip, one in the middle, and then one towards the top, right. So the tippy tip. Something like that. Okay. Now this is just a rough. You know, this brush ain't worth a damn either. Where's all my good brushes? I don't want to use the ones that are super good, but I may have to. Because some of these have just been used. Well, I guess we'll use this one. This one's a, this is a good one that's never been broke hasn't been broken in yet. If I don't use up these damn Chinese brushes, I'm never gonna go be able to go and buy the good ones from the country I don't mind buying them from. And there's a rumor on the horizon that at some point in the future, we may have much better internet. And once that happens, we'll see what we can do about maybe getting a video camera, a stream through the computer, and then uh, be able to do this in, in much better resolution than you guys are seeing right now. Because I'm not happy with it. I'm, I'm glad you guys are somewhat enjoying it. But I'm, I go back and look at the live video and I'm like, eh, it just doesn't look very good. you know. And hell, my phone can do 8K, so... It's just um, YouTube decides that if you're streaming through a mobile connection, you don't deserve to have better resolution than 720. Regardless of how good of a, inner, of a wireless connection you have. So. All right, let's get this. Let's clean up these uh, black things. I decided not to use. This is the cheapo black that's here. This is the one that I was using on the uh, edges, whatever the folk art is. So, let me make sure I don't have a. Okay, I don't. All right, that's done. Get the white out. Can always be painting every night. There's plenty to do. So yeah, the other side track I got to deal with is the Dracula Army. That's been on my list for a while, but I'm not starting on them without the Pope being done. I, I can't be split in a bunch of different ways. Nothing will be, be accomplished. So.
Okay, let's add a little bit more white to that. It's a kind of a basic premise we have there. So I forget what we did last time, uh, the War of the Roses thing. I don't remember if I did it live or I just filmed it and just uploaded it. I think I did not do it live, and we probably won't do it live then because um, it's hard to get all those details of a battlefield when you're filming at 720 and, you know, the it could go out at some point. or So we're going to make... We'll make sure that we, we get that our typical 1080 on there. Okay. Let's get the red. flip this chair upside down and find out why the hell it's making all that creaky noise in. My wife's like, what did you do to my chair? It's now makes a noise. I'm like, I don't know. I've been sitting in it only. Hell, I didn't even move that much. You know, I'm painting it. So how much moving can I do? took over her computer office chair because he wasn't using it anymore because the one that was sitting here originally it's also started creaking so there's got to be a way to flip this thing upside down and use some lubricant or something like that to keep it from shifting from side to side and make it out of noisy annoying uh, creaky sounds all right let's uh do we have any yellow still left no Let's get let's get some of this over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd rather do that. I'd rather be doing this um, and filming it than you know, like listening to a podcast or something like that. Although I'm way behind on my Dan Carlin stuff, I need to. I'm halfway through the, I thought it was caught up, and then the, um, what's he call it, the supernova in the east, yeah, the supernova in the east, I'm in the middle of, I think the fifth one, or the fourth one, or something like that, and there's still one more to go after that, so I'm, I need to play catch up, but I'd rather be doing this, filming it, than, um, than just listening to some random thing that I can just uh, cop out of. For those of you who do not know who Dan Carlin is, he does a lot of history podcasts. He has a podcast that's called Hardcore History, and um, his episodes can be kind of long. And uh, he actually, he says he's a war gamer, which is pretty cool. Um, I've been listening to him for a number of years. What was the other day that I missed? Oh, yeah, Barbarossa. 80th anniversary of uh, Barbarossa. So what we used to do all the time was World War II Eastern Front. My favorite theater to war game of World War II. That's where the bad guys are at.
think there was a discussion on one of the other things saying, could the Germans have won? How many times has that been discussed, right? I think the Germans got really, really lucky for the most part. But they were at the right place at the right time, or depending on how you look at it, at the wrong place at the wrong time. But um, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't have won against Russia if they would have just gone in as liberators. Because everybody in Ukraine was basically welcomed with open arms and like, oh, this is more of the same, you know? They would just presented themselves as liberators. I just don't see how. But... It's a good thing that it turned out the way it did. You guys over in the UK, do you ever wonder, I wonder what would have happened if they would have, England would have just stayed out. And I say England, I mean, you know, the Commonwealth would have just stayed out of the First World War. How much different would the world be today? Would it be better? Would it be worse? Who knows, right? Butterfly effect. Okay. That's what we're going to go with. Um, we're going to use a lighter colored horse so it pops a little bit. That's what we're going to roll to next. Let's see. A lighter colored horse, huh? Let's go with this army painter. I mentioned this before. I'm not super satisfied with how army painter turns out. Sometimes it's the not the colors, it's just the consistency of their paint. Just really strange. Army painter. Adzlev Hedevej. Sounds almost Hebrew. Got their address? Ad Adzlev Hedevej. Five. 8362 Horning Herning Denmark But yes yeah, has made in France and other EU countries That's interesting 
Or all, I thought their paint said made in Denmark. Is that just a different color? Let's see what we got here. This one's made in Denmark. But this color is made in France. Monster brown. Is that where monsters come from? France? Maybe in the Napoleonic period, right? Where does the yellow come from? Denmark. Huh. I wonder why this one's made. Different place. Other EU countries. What, France is worth mentioning, but the other ones aren't? Come on. So we're just going to color the entire horse with this color here. I shouldn't have been that close to the edge because I'm having, I don't want to get the sponge. I don't want to color the sponge underneath if I can avoid it. Yeah, we're definitely going to be doing a lot of painting next week. Hopefully, that's what the plan is. And we've got a jump start on these guys. Like I said, we got this knight, this actual knight figure, and and two more knights. Then we've got two stands of spear, a couple stands of crossbowmen, three saloi, um, the litter himself. Wardrobe, there he is. Hey, we were just talking about World War II, and he showed up. Poof. The World Wars were politically motivated by both sides. I mentioned this earlier, but I found out recently, and recently, I mean, in the last couple of years, that the Kaiser was a short guy. There you go. There's your problem. All these wars started by short people. <laughs> I did not know that. I know they had a crippled arm. I mean, short like he was like five seven or five six or something like that. I didn't know that. I was a normal sized guy. No wonder. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If um, if I had to get back into naval gaming, uh, I would definitely do that Victorian time period where anybody could have sided with anybody. And, you know, before like 1904, you know, and just do stuff like that. Short range stuff. Um, Cause I've done all the, I've done all the World War naval stuff, I'm, you know, I'm done with that. The either battles are either too big or I've done them before. So But no, I'm not getting back into that. I've I've done that. I've I was mentioning this in the other game. I said, you know, DBA isn't perfect, but when I paint a DBA army, I know I'm gonna get a lot of use out of it. So it's like why should I even get into something else? Because I'm just not gonna get the use out of it. You know, I don't mind playing other games, but I mean, produce to play other games. I just don't see what the point is. You know, um, I'm just not going to get the use out of it. 
Because I've been tempted, like, okay, let me paint my World War II figures. I, I got a tons of World War II 20 millimeter figures. Tons, tons of figures I love by my favorite sculptor of all time. And the problem with painting them is, is I may never use them in a game because the game that I would need to play would be so anal retentive that I wouldn't get anything done. So I'm like, well, I'm better off just painting DBA stuff. You know, I've kind of come to that realization, you know. But at the same time, I'm not selling them because it might be an off chance I can get around to doing them. But. Um, Mr. Curry, I just sealed a Batavian army today, and, I, and I'm cleaning figures for a Jewish revolt army right now. Five fast hordes. Sounds like a world beater. So, let me tell you something about fat, fast hordes. Luke played the Aztecs and wiped the floor with people using his disposable hordes that were fast. I think they can have six. So don't be poo-pooing hordes, especially not fast ones. Um, no, I think that's cool. That's, that's really cool. Um, Jewish army. I got a Jewish army on my list. Uh, which one is it? The Hasmonean? The Hasmonean and the uh, and Herod's army. The problem with them is that when I started doing the research, they're going to be they're going to look a lot like a Hellenistic army. You know, for the most part, uh, they're clean shaven. Um, they're you know Hellenistic, so that's not really what I wanted to do with them. I could probably spin some. Uh, you know, put some iconography or something like that to make them a little bit, you know, look uh, a little Jewish or something like that. But that's sort of the reason I was wanting to do them. I wanted a Hebrew army. And, uh, you know, and Herod fits in there nicely with uh, my Marian Romans and my Armenians because they were playing off of each other and they can have a Parthian ally. It's a cool list. It's a really, really cool list. Um, and, you know, it's not a super powerful army. Uh, it could be like a Solois... Uh, is it a Solois Solius or a Wimpors? Maybe both. So all those things that checks all those boxes. But when I get down to it, I'm just painting um, Macedonian type figures for the most of the army. And I'm like, uh, eh. you know. Um, so as I did get the book on uh, on Herod's army, or I found it or something like that. And I was disappointed that they weren't more... Um, that they didn't look more native, you know? I was disappointed in that. Seems like Roman Cav or any Cav will make a bad day. Don't get caught in the open. Um, you know, but if the hordes get beaten um, and you lose them, they don't count against you. So, you know, that's not a big deal. It's something different, you know? I'm starting to like being interested in painting armies that are different from from you know, how they look and composition of each other. Not necessarily that they w they're winning games, you know, because they'll probably do fine against their enemies. But, uh, yeah, Jewish Revolt, that's cool. There's... Um, you get to make a Masada for a BUA. Um, yeah, and who's the guys that make the really cool Maccabean figures? Zystod. Zystod makes some really animated looking Maccabean figures. I know that's a lot earlier, but you could probably work some of those figures in there. But they even have like priests and stuff like that. There's some cool stuff that could be done on there. But um, yeah, that army is that's not a popular army, which is all the more reason to do it. You know, absolutely. I think that's a cool choice. And the other thing, it was an army that uh, didn't win. I mean, they won battles, but I mean, in the end, they didn't win. So I, I kind of, I kind of like armies that are that way better because it's like, well, you know, I I did better than they did historically. Yeah. <laughs> the Jewish revolt figures are Magister Militum. I can I always forget that name. I keep wanting to call them uh, Chariot because they were Chariot for many years. You know. And um, I bet Falcon made some figures too. I wonder whatever happened to, the, to I wonder whatever happened to Kai. He, um, 
I saw him at Historicon a couple times, and he came to one of our shows in Florida, and I picked up some figures from him, but then he just disappeared. That was every bit of 10 years ago. Maybe longer than that. So, yeah, Falcon made some cool figures. I got a few of them. They've got that one website you guys have in the UK called, I got have it hot linked here, Colonel Bill's, what is it called? Colonel Bill's Recruiting Office. And he's got some people that sell used figures on there, but there doesn't seem to be a whole lot on there at the time. But um, yeah, I found out about that. I don't want to say recently, because I have know about it a little bit, but I've never ordered anything on there because he just doesn't seem to have uh, a whole lot in the scales that I'm interested in right now. But he does, there's some weird things that show up there from time to time, so that's cool. I have played, um, uh, Don does um, Old Testament battles, or he has done them, or tournaments, or campaigns, and I try to play the Hebrews every chance I get, and I, they, they tend to be lucky like the Irish, I tend to do really well with them, so, um, but again, he already has the army, so, and I think that his painter, I like, I like what his painter did, um, he worked like the Star David into some of the stuff, even though it's inaccurate because that hadn't been invented yet. But, uh, you know, it, they look native. They, they look the part, you know. So, um, yeah, I like that army, which is the one that he has. Uh, I think it's even earlier than that. But, yeah, he's done a, he's done, he's done some battles with the, um, with the Hebrews and stuff like that. And those are, those are cool. You know who wants to play? As, if you're playing Assyrians versus the 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 early Hebrews, I want to play the early Hebrews. I mean, what's what's the fun in just plowing into people with a heavy chariot? I'd rather take the challenge of trying to, you know, not get impaled by that. Hey, that's just me. You know, I want the challenge. Make sure I don't have any messages here. I don't. That can go away. Okay. Thanks for hanging with me, folks. Getting some painting done on Wednesday evening. I know we probably will not get this guy done. I know we won't get this guy done. But we'll almost have him done, and that way... We could start working on the next figure when I get a chance, which may not be until Saturday morning, but so be it. Remember Falcon, appreciate your unboxing from the US Essex distributor. I emailed them 10 minutes after watching your video. Yes! Steven, are you in the US? I can't remember if you are. Your last name makes me seem like you're in the UK. Um, I don't know. Certainly there's people with that. I thought you were in the UK. But yeah, so so CMB Miniatures, I had a scare. Like I ordered, I ordered from them, and then I got an email saying, hey, well, I received your order, but it was like automated. And then... I didn't hear anything for like five days. And I'm like, I just dropped them a line. I'm like, um, I'm just checking to make sure that you'd gotten my order. When you think I would receive it? And he's like, oh yeah, we sent it out on Monday. So I'd put the order in on Friday and on Monday they sent the order out and I received it like on Thursday or something like that. Um, maybe even Friday or something. Oh, I was gone over the weekend. So it either came in Friday or Saturday. Uh, I came back on Friday, on Saturday evening. So yeah, I that's that was my, I, I guess I'm just spoiled knowing that usually I get an email saying, hey, we we may, we just mailed them out, and here's the tracking number. 
you know, that's what I'm used to. So, New York State, last name of Scottish descent. Excellent. Honestly, if fortifications were involved, the denizens of Judea would kick butt. Yeah, yeah, they held off for a long time. New York State. One of the people in New York that didn't come to Florida yet. <laughs> Just remember what we are in Florida, so when you retire, you can get a lot of DBA playing here. Although I have to admit, when I get closer to retire, I, I just I can't see myself living anywhere but Florida. I don't know. Some of it's psychological. I've been here my whole life. I hate how hot it is here, but I really need to the I, I, I am a beach person. Now I don't see myself ever living at the beach. Um, it's too expensive, uh, too much insurance, and uh, you know, when you're really close to something, you don't appreciate it. You know, when you're looking at something all the time, you don't really appreciate it. But it would be nice to be a little closer, but I'll tell you what, where we're at in the state, we're pretty much hurricane free. Um, I'm not really worried about a direct impact or anything where we're at, but then it's a trek for us to go to the shore uh, as well. But um, it would be nice to live closer to the salt water than we do when than we currently are right now. But no plans to leave this area anytime soon this is where work is so i'm good here at least another we'll just round up the 20 years we'll leave it at that so but yeah i, lo I love the going to some the salt water thing so we gotta we gotta go to the beach at least once a once a month it's good for my skin and um for starters and um need to do that so Lived in Florida my whole life and never been out to the beaches in the Panhandle. And just too far away from us. It's like five hours and there's nothing out there. Just ha just haven't done it. You know, you need a long weekend to go out there. And I think we tried to go out there a couple times. We were going to go out there for for my fiftieth, and then it just didn't. You know, it happened. My birthday's always around around Father's Day, so it was impossible to find a hotel or. During that time, everything was taken. So everybody's traveling, even though uh, even though lots of people are supposedly out of work and scared, everybody seems to be traveling. So, hmm, how strange. But it's all good. So we tend to go into the St. Pete area. St. Petersburg area, the Gulf is much more calm than the Atlantic. Main thing is is the drag. You go to the you go to the Atlantic and and you just get pulled either north or south depending on which way it's going. So you, you put in and you go out. I don't know, hundred feet, two hundred feet, or whatever, and you're ready to come back in and. You know, you're a quarter mile from your stuff that you left on the shore because you've either been pulled one way or the other. It's just annoying, you know. It doesn't happen like that in the Gulf, so. Oh, you guys haven't checked out the last video we did this past week? It was a Monday, right? Man, it seems like it was a long time ago. It was only two days ago. The um, um, Fast and Furious. We've run that. We've run that event at a convention before. It was a big hit. It's kind of like a, another version of Wimp Wars. You know, you can't use. A, it's try to keep people from using their crutches, their armies that they can always count on and always use their things. So, gotta play. Gotta play some lighter armies and. Expand your horizons a little bit. I was trying to get people to to play something a little bit different than normal. So, so 
Steven, you go up to uh, Historicon regularly? I've gone every year since 2006, except this year because they moved it to November, which is a, a deal. Well, and last year where they didn't have it. November is a deal breaker for me. It's literally the worst month it could possibly be. That's anniversary month. And, and this year we're actually going away for a week and another to another country. At least that's what the plan is. So that's... I'll never make a fall in because this is the wrong time of year and um, Cold Wars, the one right, the one that's in March. That's too close to our April convention in Orlando. So, um, Historicon is the one I attend when we go up there, and I've gone every year since 2006. Like I said, except last year and um, and this year, of course, because they moved it to November. But we'll, I'm sure we'll go next year, as long as these uh, these um, the barriers have been lifted. We'll we'll go and we'll run DBA from start to finish. You know, it's about a 14 and a half hour drive for us, so we want to play the entire time. It makes it worthwhile. It's. See how we're building this thing up. This is actually one of the things I enjoy doing the most is building up the the muscles and stuff on the horses. Um, Never painted any horses, and so I started playing painting DBA in 2004. Uh, I just didn't do anything that had horses, you know. Not too many. Uh, World War stuff, World War II stuff with horses. Of course, there are, but you know, I know most of the German forces were horse drawn, but still. You don't you don't see that in a tactical type game, but I do enjoy painting horses. Okay, we still have a white that's alive. We do. Looks like it. Batavian Army. Did a battle with Luke's Batavians, I think. He morphed a Batavian Army. The Toral, if I remember correctly. He's supposed to make a showing on uh, on Monday, but we'll see. I haven't seen him in a long time. Maybe only once this year. Maybe only once. So.
All right. So this guy looks to have some kind of an undershirt underneath the um, what he's carrying there. Red seems to be kind of the obvious one, as long as we don't have anybody else with it, and we doesn't seem like we do. So let's go ahead and knock that out. Good. Time is at 8.30. I may have to cut out here at, on short notice, but we're going to try to go as long as we can. As the girls could be back any moment. And not that they keep me from painting. But, you know, I hadn't seen them all day. I came home and they weren't here, so. One of these days is not gonna rain here and I'm not gonna know what to do because I think we've had like two weeks of solid rain every single day. Which honestly isn't that big of a deal, except it comes with lightning, which has happened earlier in the day. So, not a lightning fan here. I'm not a fan of that stuff. Okay, yeah, I think that'll suffice for that. Um, I don't know why I didn't paint his helmet. It's just going to be in helmet colored. No, might as well do the lance at this point. That could stay open. It's, uh... mm -hmm. Let's see. Paint all this in this kind of mid range brown color. 
this is early-ish medieval, so we don't want to get into having all kinds of colored lances in this army. Different brown, sure, but We're going to go ahead and um, we're going to finish this lance and then we're going to call it a night. I got some other stuff I need to knock out before it gets to be too late and I won't be able to. So. And it might actually beat me to it. They might already. They're about to get here, so. Let's get a little bit. We should still be able to do our Friday, Saturday morning paintings and our Sunday morning paintings. So, what's tomorrow? Thursday? Probably not any painting. Not any painting on Friday for sure. I'm going to get together with Mitch. We'll try to do some planning those games. And then uh, back at it on Saturday and Sunday. Skip Monday and then paint. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. For sure. All right, we're going to we're going to leave this done like this and we're going to call this a wrap. Almost 2 hours. That's not too bad in the middle of a work week. So Anyhow, thanks for stopping by and seeing the progress on the nights. And we will catch you guys on Saturday morning, hopefully, and um, have some more chit-chat then. Anyhow, thanks for coming by, and happy painting, folks. Enjoy the rest of your week. We're halfway there. Bye-bye.